Alright, what's up my ponyos? This is Andy Paulus, dollgamesplayed.com, allgamesplayed.com, allgamesplayed.com. Oh yeah. Where's the coast, my friends? We are playing Magic 2015. I would have brought to you, this to you a little bit earlier on the iPad, but it wouldn't work. I don't know why, I don't know how. It's just stupid that it didn't. But, uh, let's jump right into this. I will take my smug face off. Is there no music? Oh man, where's the music? Oh, touch. Oh, I remember this guy. I don't remember him though. Whoa. He's a seminar, I'm guessing, or he's a planeswalker. Oh, that guy took his helmet. Oh, he's bad aced. I like that. I'm gonna take that video. There we go. Now we're playing. Alright, let's jump right into it. Make a name. Dr. Hyas. Yes, please. I know a lot about Magic the Gathering. We'll play medium, whatever. Select a persona to use a profile. Persona can be changed from player to player. What do I like? This is so cool. Um, I'm usually a chick. So let's find the coolest chick. That guy's actually kind of cool. She's totally Korean. That looks like a rhinoceros. Wait, that's an elephant. There's a lot of personas. I like her. We might pick her. No, 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 no. No, frick, 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 frick. Let's go back. There's 10 more personas. Thank you. Alright, campaign, equip deck. Let's go play campaign. Oh, let's play the tutorial then. What do I do, Missy? Oh, where do I play? Achievements, titles, collectibles, where do I go? I don't even know, do I need to pick a deck? Why do I run up? Where do I play? This isn't very friendly. There we go. Multiplayer, shop, decks, card collections, help, player profile, store locator, extras. Single player, let's play the uh, tutorial. The first quest, the basics. All right, let's skip it, please. Alright, what do I want to do? What type of dark? I think I'm going to be black, black and white. Or just black. Natural order, chaos and slash. 
cruel denial expands your choices no. life and death yeah black and white it's like chick is black and she's got a deadly persona right all right let's do this first quest all right guys this is how you play magic I'm gonna go through the tutorial for your for your enjoyment so let's enjoy this together I think I want to make myself a little bit smaller just a little bit hunt bigger game every week join the local store I actually know that they actually I know that they play every Friday night but I can't oh I gotta continue to <laughs> I don't know, freaking, freaking, freaking. Welcome back to Gallon. You and your opponent take on the role of Plains Walker, a powerful sorcerer, sorceress, who can magically travel between planes of existence. To one, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life to zero. I know that. To this, you will use a variety of tools presented by the game of cards. All players have their own decks to play with. You shuffled your deck, becomes your library for the game. The beginning of the game, each player draws seven cards. Look at double tap to zoom in. That's not bad. There are a lot of different colors. There's five. For first card, you're playing the green deck. Green specializes in large, uh, powerful creatures. Your opponent is crimson. To cast spells or summon creatures, you're going to need resources and mana. I know that. Since you don't have enough mana to cast any spells, we're going to end our turn. Crimson Mage also plays lands to build resources. I'd like to put my player profile like right on top of that chick's face, but I'm not that savvy, so whatever. What did he bring out? Crimson Mage summoning a creature. Attacking with a creature like the crazed goblin is the majority of ways players defeat their opponent. On every creature card, the bottom corner displays the power and toughness. Power is one. Toughness is one. The amount of damage needed to take it. Every spell has a mana cost. Summoning the grazed goblins was a single mana. Grazed goblins attacks... Each turn, if able. It's fine. Oh, is he gonna attack me? Okay, mana cost can be more complex than crazy goblins. For example, Rumbling has two, two, which is two randoms and two colored. When a player gains control of a creature, it can't attack yet or do anything that requires tapping. It's, there's a it's called Summoning Sickness. The creature is a dizzy... Blah, blah, blah. Great. Okay, it's your turn. Let's play a mana. Let's play a Colonian Tusker. Creature's power and toughness is 3-3. Three, three. That's more match than a Grease Goblins. Tusker has a summoning sickness and won't be able to attack. Let's pass. I can't just say continue. Now the Crimson Mage will play a land and then attack us with Grease Goblins. And he will die. I will allow him to die. Whoa. What is that? The creature attacks, it taps, and moves forward. Then I have to sh direct. If the Crimson Mage is attacking the creature's arm blocked, you will take damage. The Colon Tusker will keep you safe. Now tap on the Colon Tusker and declare a Brocker. What did I do? Oh, then I 
to block over there. During the combat, damage step each creature deals damage equal to its power. Crazy Goblin will deal damage and then die. In the turn, each creature will heal any damage dealt, dealt to him. Hurry, man. Let's put another mana out. That's four. That's, four. No, that's five. Attack the Crimson Mage. Caught him up because he doesn't have any creatures, he will take three damage. You don't have any spells that you can cast, let's pass. This is much more smooth than the other game. 2014 was pretty good, but it was not that good. Oh, Blood Craze Neonate. Blood Craze Neonate attacks each turn of Fable. Whenever Blood Craze de deals damage, put a 1 1 counter on it. You cannot cast Rumbling Bull off. Thought I touched it. Okay. It is important to know that magic you only decide that your creatures are attacking an opponent. You don't have control over which opponent creatures will block. So you're going to block unless the card says otherwise block creatures deal all damage to creatures that block them. No damage will be dealt to the defending player. Blocking with small creatures will not take any damage and it is a good strategy. Kablooey. Thank you. What'd you come out with? Well, we strong. Cyclops. Belldrock Cyclops attacks each turn if he's able. That doesn't make any sense. All creatures can. That's stupid. It's a dumb notion. I got so much mana. So I'm going to try something different. Instead of playing your land and casting a spell before combat, wait until after combat. Okay, now attack with both your creatures. Crimson Mage has decided not to block with his Cyclops, so he'll take 7 damage. Awesome. During the main phase of your combat, go ahead and play your land. You'll be you'll be in great shape to win if you cast this creature next. I sure will. So you can do it either way. Crimson Mage will play a land and attack. This means you won't be able to block next turn. But I don't wanna... Kablooey. You're just being greedy, gosh. What if I wanted to take damage? You can't tell me otherwise. You just need to attack with everything. So let me tap the attack with all. Oh, that's not bad. That's quick. That's intuitive. 
We're so good at this game. Dr. Haas wins. Quest 2, we spice up the battle. Alright, second quest, Expanding Horizons. This is our tutorial. So honey buns. In addition to summoning creatures, you'll use the mana from your lands to cast sorceries one time to use spells that have a variety of immediate effects. For your second course, you'll be able to use a black deck. Black specializes in removing your opponent's creatures. Your opponent is an Azure Mage. Azure Mage. We arrived this game already in progress. As you can see, a lot of dueling has gone on. But with no creatures in the battle, all it takes is a miracle to survive the next few turns. This is an Azure's Mage turn. She attacks with her last remaining creatures, bringing you to two damage. Let's do this. Jellyfish. Mano Wisp enters the battlefield. Return target creature to his or her hand. So do I not have a hand? Yeah, this looks promising. You've drawn Assassinate, a sorcery, unlike creatures and land. Sorceries have an effect and they're put in the graveyard. One, two, three, four, five. Magic is your turn to split. Sources can be cast either in the two main phases. So target target tapped creature. Destroy it. Oh, we saved our life. Our life has been saved. Now Age of Mage will cast some spells. Divination allows a player to draw two cards. Signature blue. Oh, what was that? What was that? Flying. My Drake is flying a building, which means you can soar over the ground. You only need to play a card that is airborne to get a threat. With another assassination card, you have no way of destroying Asia's mage with Windrake. What will you do to stay alive? Vampire Nighthawk? Of course, just play this guy. That's right, you played a creature that was given to you. Line 8 7, Mother of Pearl, Goliath Sphinx. Now, in Sears Trevor, Goliath Sphinx can kill you in one hit, but the good news is that your vampire Nihil can kill any creature it deals damage to because it has death touch. Apply the creature that you've just drawn. Attack with the creatures that I've just brought out. Here's an interesting decision. Do you attack with the Vampiric Nighthawk? If you do, you won't have any untapped creatures to block the Goliath Sphinx with. I thought Summoning Sickness could block.
with the fudge. I'm dying. So that wasn't good. He's gonna attack with both of them and I'm gonna die. How can we even attack with the other guy? You've drawn a powerful sorcery rise from the grave and re reincarnate creatures from the grave. Now that you have a chance to take the glide sphinx, your own. Let's sick put a target creature from a graveyard into the battlefield under your control. That creature is a black zombie in addition to other colors and types. Cool. Fine heavens. Is it black? Oh, it changed its color. It appears safe to attack with your zombie Goliath. So summoning sickness can't block. I I thought for whatever reason you could. I'm a murderer. Attack with all yo. Attack with all yo. So I technically died. I lost this one, my friends. I'm sorry. I will. Join Quest 3. Quest 3. There's five quests. Five, so. I'm on the third. Augmentation. Hem enhancements are permanent that represent magical resources. Some enchantments affect the entire game. Others, called auras, are attached to specific creatures or other cards. Okay, so they changed the wording. They're called auras when they attack attach to creatures. For your third question, will be a white deck. The white specifying and assuming the army of small, fishy creatures your opponent is Onyx Mage. That's me. I'm an Onyx Wage Mage. I mean, you've drawn an enchantment. Enchantments are powerful spells whose, whose effects are constant as long as they remain in the battlefield. Honor of the Pure, for example, increases the power and toughness of all your white creatures. Nice. Human soldier, nice. That's like nine, six damage. Also, I don't need to fix the creatures as long as it remains in battlefield. Nice. Four six. Ah. I should wait. Thanks for letting me wait.
You now have a chance to take care of this minotaur problem. Creatures have the ability to block your groups. In this situation, your glory seekers will be able to destroy the minotaur ab abomination. That's right. I didn't know about this. This is new. Tap one of your glory seekers and tap block. I yeah, I had no idea you could do this in magic. Some of the older versions, I don't think this was a, a case, but now you can. But. 8 8. Flying? Nightmare? Horse? Nightmare's power and toughness are equal to the number of swamps you control. My goodness. You've drawn a special kind of enchantment. Aura, while most creatures. while most enchantments affect the entire game. Globally, auras affect specific things using creatures. This one looks particularly useful. Now the aura allows you to target any creature on the battlefield. I've seen this before. Pacifism. Enchant creature. Enchant creature cannot. Enchant creature cannot attack or be blocked. Good old son. You can't do anything. Yo. Now that nightmare has been pacified, it cannot block. It can't block this time. Now I can attack. Eat it, son. Turn to normal. Turn to creature. It gets negative two two. Oh, that stinks. Onyx may just cast an aura on you on the glory seeker, which leaves you at a negative at a one one creature. What is this? Another creature? Just a zombie. Zombastic. Night guard patrol has some special abilities. Zoom in and learn more. First strike vigilance. Night guard patrol has first strike vigilance. First strike means that Night Guard Patrol will deal damage before creatures without without first strike. This lets them kill an opponent creature before Night Guard Patrol is dealt damage. Vigilance means that the Night Guard Patrol doesn't tap when it attacks. It means that it can block during your opponent's next run. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Skip attack. Why didn't attack me? So block with them, and I'm gonna attack him first. Get on, son. That's really cool. You didn't let me. You didn't let me put a planes down. I wanna put a planes down. Now swing for the win. Am I gonna win? Oh yeah, I pacified that, bro. Yeah, that. I didn't get to read that. It's some cool dragon. We got the fourth one. Let's do this. Can't believe on the second one I died. A st the stack is where every spell waits for the other players to respond to it. Instant spells take advantage of the stack and whispering tricks like dealing damage, buffing a creature, or even counting opponents. Oops. They put a lot of effort in this game. It looks really, really good. 
For your fourth quest, you'll be using a blue deck, blue specially in disrupting opponent's plans, drawing cards, and usually difficult to block creatures. Your opponent is Jade Mage. These are the elementals. Gets 3 3 until the turn. Jade Mage can attack an instant. It works like sorceries, but they'll have immediate effect. Oh, so sudden sickness can block. I was right. You've done cancel a spell that counters another one. Counting stops the spell from happening. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, you can respond to it with an instant light cancel. It used to be called counter. Better not attack before you have good choices. Yeah, I won't be that smart because I'm only at four. Okay, now Jade Mage just cast another Growth Giant, but instead of letting it make the rumbling, you can respond. Stop timer. Place cancel target giant growth. Now you've got the spell cancel target Jimmy's growth. The zone with a spell live for the respond called a stack. Every player can add one can add more instants or abilities to the stack in the same way. Oh, so you can on top of it if you'd like. Interesting. Well, I gotta block. If I don't, I die. Trample. That's not good. You've drawn Archimancer. A creature with a tur tur uh, triggering ability. Many creatures have triggering abilities when they enter the battle for your Archimancer, for example, will retrieve an instant or sorcery from your graveyard when it enters the battlefield. Cool. Which one should I grab? You know it. That's what I want. Normally, blocking creatures take all the damage from the attacking creature, but if a creature's trample is blocked, it will deal enough damage to kill the blocking creature and deal the remaining damage to the defending player. Oh, crap. It's gonna deal what? Two damage? Oh crap, unless you pause the game by tapping the stop timer button, Dark Drink will probably kill you. Dust Squirm Drake. Dang, yeah, he'll kill me. For sure. Sorry, Brohan. Play Divination. Draw two cards. Play either at play a, either adept when targeting spike both in its entering the Whenever either adept enters the battlefield, return target creature to its own hand. Cool. Is it gonna assume that one? Yeah. Exchange control of two target creatures. Switch through. 
sorcery. Seven, what does that mean? Whoa, 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 whoa. Promoral Hydra enters the battlefield with X number plus one plus one counters. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of one of one counters on Promoral Hydra. Promoral Hydra has trample as long as it has ten or more counters on it. Wow. Let's do old switcheroo. Fantastic switcheroo will surely turn the tide in your favor. Casting allows you to swip, swap the creatures with one of your opponent. Let's do switcheroo. Put your root. Thank you. Ten mana. He doesn't want to attack. Double the amount of counters, my heavens. Yep, this is murder for sure. Dang, that switcheroo is so cheap. Second last one. Interactions. Tutorial. Many cards and magic have special abilities. Even after the cast, some permanents have abilities you can activate, while others have abilities that you can trigger when certain conditions are met. Well, let's learn about those right now, guys. Let's learn about it. For your final crush, you'll be using a red deck, uh, especially these aggressive, quick creatures and interesting abilities. Your opponent is Alabaster Mage. So what are we doing, boys? What do we got here? Something flying? Flying Pegasus. There was nothing I can do. He's gonna hit me. Can't do anything. What is that? Artifact. Whenever you cast a white spell or a planes into the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. I like that. Staff of the Sun Man, I guess. I've seen that before. There's so many different cards like that. You've drawn Prodigal Pyromancer, a creature, a creature with an active ability. For example, you can tap Prodigal Prodigal to deal one damage to a creature or a player of your choice. Just like attacking abilities that require tap, like person can attack while a creature has some sickness. Yep. Understandable. All of us can cast Bone Splitter and Equipment. Casting Equipment spell only puts it on the battlefield. To attach it or retach it, you need to pay its, its equip cost. Equipment remains on the battlefield even if the creature leaves. Oh goodness, I don't want to die. Gotta block this man, it's gonna kill him. Oh, he's fly, shoot. You take four damage from this attack because the bone stream increased the creature's power by two. Now you have Project Report Mancher and no longer summon signatures, you can activate its ability, you can tap the creature.
That's how you do it. Easy enough. Unlike with ours, that the creature with the attach, attach, uh, enchantment equipment leaves the battlefield, the equipment remains ready to be re reattached for the same equipment cost. Can I pay for it? No, it's not mine. Like equipment, there are many artifacts and cards and magic. Artifacts are usually colorless, which means any color mana can be used to cast them. Some creatures are artifacts. Anything that affects artifacts can affect artifact creatures as well. Artifact creature, gargoyle, defender. Cast three until end of turn. Gargoyle, send loses defending, defender and gains flying. I don't know what defender is. Oh, this is crappy. You drew a torch fiend. It has an active ability that doesn't require tapping. These creatures can be used even when creatures are something sick. Torch fiend's acquired ability requires you to sacrifice it. Put it in the graveyard to get the effect. Cast torch fiend now. Uses ability. Destroy target artifact. Oh. Not bad. I get to attack him. Type of all. Uno damage. What's he got this time? Flying Vigilance. Oh man. Archangel. Uju Dragon Hatchling activates ability cost using a, a thing. Activating abilities can be used as many times as you can play the cost. Only project requirements is ability you don't need to tap. Really? Wait a minute. Can I activate it? Nice and smart. Allows me to activate the maximum amount. Eat it, son. That hatchling was awesome. Who's this? Cool, I can tap target creature. Some instants allow you to target a creature, apply a cast stealing seer, and deal 3 damage. None of my grasp, holy crap, I still got five whatevers to do. Just tagging them one by one. Let's just end it off right now. Oh, he didn't do anything, yo. You drew Volcanic Dragon, which means it's not affected by some of his sickness. Jack with all the win. Woohoo! 
Good job, guys. I did it. Nice. Alright guys, this is the technically towards the end of the tutorial. I'm not going to finish it because I'm about to fall asleep, but I want you guys to tune in next time while we play the final quest, Prove Your Worth with Magic the Gathering 2015. Hit like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more. Andy Paul's allgamesplayed.com, allgamesplayed.com, allgamesplayed.com.